Hello, and a very warm welcome to the Magnetism and Spin Electronics Group at Trinity College Dublin, a 400-year-old historic campus right at the heart of the city. This is the Magnetism and Spin Electronics Group as it stood before COVID. And this is me, Thomas Tavanov, your host for the next hour. We shall start our tour from the Sami Nasser Institute of Advanced Materials, the location of our Material Magnetism Lab. Later on, we shall also visit the Center for Adaptive Nanostructures and Nanodevices, or CRAN for short. As of COVID-19 imposed restrictions, we should stop here for a few seconds to put on our masks and gloves. I'll walk with you now to our main magnetism and spintronics lab in the SNAM Institute. I'll also take the privilege to introduce you to Dr. Muswami Venkatesan, who's going to show you to a few of the important bits and pieces in this lab. I would like to give you a quick look at our SNAM lab, a senior researcher in charge of work here. This is where we make all our new magnetic materials, permanent magnets, and other functional magnetic materials, off metals, oil alloys, and in particular, the zero moment off metallic ferry magnets. We also do quite a lot of magnetometry, Vibratic sample magnetometer with the big 1.3 tesla electromagnet or with 1 tesla or 2 tesla multi permanent magnets that create variable fields. We developed them some years back. Most important is probably the 5 tesla squid magnetometer that we use to characterize almost every new magnetic sample. The first step in producing a new alloy is to weigh out the elements, melt them and cast them on the copper earth of the electric arc furnace under an high purity organ atmosphere. Rui is melting a oyster alloy here. She obtains a button of several grams. We can then anneal and quench it to stabilize a particular crystallographic phase. We have a good collection of vacuum furnaces. Afterwards, we may have to slice the samples with the diamond saw or mount and polish the surface for particular measurements. Every new sample is checked by X-ray diffraction over in crayon. For amorphous alloys, we need a different process. Here, Asen is making a metallic glass. We have to melt the button again in an oil furnace and eject a molten jet through a tiny orifice. The jet is quenched on a rapidly spinning copper wheel at about a million degrees per second. This freezes the liquid structure into ribbons. In this case, an amorphous iron-based alloy. Another method we can use is electrodeposition sometimes in porous membranes using cooled electrolytes to give us a nano -wise. We do this in our chemistry lab. Other characterization techniques we have here are mass bar spectroscopy, magnetic force microscopy, and thermobasic analyzer. We also design and build equipment. We make the parts we need by 3D printing powered by low force stereolithography. Lucy is using the squid. You will hear more from her later. A short stroll shall bring us to our tinfoil magnetism lab, located in the Norton Institute. After we put our masks and gloves again, we shall go to level 4 of the Center for Research on Adaptive Nanostructures and Nanodevices. Here I'll introduce you to Drs. Gunnar Atchison and Karsten Rode. Karsten shall be your host for the rest of the tour here. Electronics or spintronics is intimately related to the magnetic tin film stacks on a substrate, for example, the magnetic tunnel junction that exhibit in excess of 200% magneto resistance. We produced these in the deposition cluster Trifolium dubium, funded by Science Foundation Ireland in 2018 at a cost of approximately 3 million euro. Most of our samples are made by magnetron sputtering, where an array of permanent magnets help confine the plasma of charged argon ions sputtering material of a target so that they can condense on a nearby substrate, typically a flat wafer or square of single crystal material such as silicon or magnesium oxide. The substrates are loaded and unloaded through a load lock that allows maintaining ultra-high vacuum in the cluster for several weeks or months on end. Here, a magnetron is being dismantled for target change and preventive maintenance. In addition to the standard target-facing substrate, 
geometry, we can also arrange for target facing target that allows a gentle growth as well as simultaneous co spattering from up to three different targets. The cluster also encompasses in situ characterization techniques such as photo electron spectroscopies and reflection high energy electron diffraction, which we just saw an example of. Another technique we use is post laser deposition, where an intense burst of light produces the plasma that transfer material from the target to the substrate. Here you can see the plasma forming just above the target. After deposition, we determine the individual layer thickness and surface roughness, as well as the crystallographic properties of the samples using X-ray reflectivity and diffraction. The density contrast between two adjacent layers give rise to oscillations in the reflected X-ray intensity, whereas the reflection of crystallographic planes provide the fingerprint of the material studied. We measure the magnetoelectronic properties of our samples using a suite of different setups, currently focused on the anomalous hole effect that reflect the spin-dependent scattering of conduction electrons, as well as band structure effects. The signal detected scales as the reciprocal of the thin film thickness, making the whole effect an extremely sensitive probe to magnetism in ultra-thin films. We have access to several different systems in our lab, ranging in field strength from about one tesla for the electromagnets, through two tesla for the permanent magnet-driven ones, and up to five and a half tesla in a cryogen-free superconducting magnet. Here a sample is being con uh, connected for measurement in the electromagnet system built by GMW. And the signal, as you can see, is almost noise-free. On the frontiers of magnetism is the ultra-short timescales, typically less than 1 picoseconds. The Cran Photonics Laboratory provides several laser amplifier systems that allows time resolutions around 250 seconds, along with ample room on the dampened optical tables to design novel experiments. At another frontier, on the top floor of Cran, we have designed and built a trest bed for the effects of magnetic fields on water spray. It is often necessary to structure the blanket films into micro or nano-sized objects. We routinely use standard UV lithography techniques and dry etching to achieve this, as well as electron beam lithography. Through the facilities at the Advanced Microscopy Laboratory, we have access to the required equipment, in particular the two e-beam lithography tools from SAIS and Elionix. I hope you've enjoyed our Zoom through tour. Stay safe and goodbye.